for this very day that he has kept us alive. Well, because of his mercies, if you look at the way we live our life, sometimes we don't deserve to live more. But God, because of his mercies, he overlooked at the mercies, he overlooked at the sins because of the love he had for us. When you love, you often look at the sins, you often look at the difficulties. For the Bible says, love covers multitude of sins. How many times in our life we make mistakes, but our parents have never given up on us? How many times we disobey our parents, but they never desert us to say, you are not even my child? How many times we fail to follow the instruction our fathers and mothers are giving us? But they never, even if they are angry, but then they still want you to be at home. They still want to put you where you're supposed to be. They always make sure you eat, you dress, you, you are in good health. Imagine if a parent who are Human beings do that. How much more God, the Creator? Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important, my brothers and sisters, wherever we are, we are the agents that spread love. We are the agents that spread goodness. We are the, the one who spread kindness. Compassion is in us. God wants each and every one of us to live at peace, to live with love, joy to be among us, who to have patience, self-control, patience in us, demonstrate our ability to control our emotion. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to talk to you about the goodness of God. The goodness of God. God is good. Everything God does is for our own good. God sent the rain for each and every one of us. God sent the sun every morning, the sunrise. God does not say, this is for the poor, this is for the rich. No, he does that for all of us. That's the kind of God we serve. The God I'm preaching you is the God of love, is the God of peace, is the God of accepting one another. Is the God who said, let there be light. And there was light. This is the God I'm preaching you. When you have to show kindness to each and every one of you. Compassion. Husband to love his wife. Wife to love his husband. And, husband. and the children to love their parents. And the parents to love their children. That's the God I'm preaching you. The God who wants the entire world to be at peace with one another. Not to go and kill somebody because you're not part of that nation or because you're not part of that tribe or you're not part of that clan. No. God wants all of us to live at peace, to enjoy our union, our association, because God is love. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's all read loud together verse 6. Psalm, 20, Psalm 23, verse 6. Let all open our mouth and read it. One, two, three, go. Surely, the quality of doing good and to have mercy, to forgive, to have pity shall follow me all the days of my life. But now notice one thing, they say that, that the goodness is for those who dwell in the house of the Lord. If you don't dwell in the house of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord will not be part of you. You will not enjoy the goodness of the Lord. So probably you may say, Pastor, what is goodness? Glory be to God. Goodness is the quality of being morally good or virtuous. 
when you desire or you, are, you have an approval, that's good. When people desire to follow the way you live, the way you talk, the way you conduct yourself, the way you dress, the way you even pray, that's good. When you have the approval of God, when God says, this is my son, this is my daughter, that approval is what is good. When people approve you, it means that you are doing something good. That quality of being morally good, that's the goodness of God. Now, whenever you hear the word morale, morale just means the ability to distinguish good to bad, evil to God. You know that stealing is bad. You are morally right. But when you begin to acknowledge stealing, say, oh, that's okay, let's stop from him, let's stop from her, you are not morally right. When you go in the street and start beating people, using implement to cause pain, you are not morally right. That's not good. When you deprive people with food, you know that people have to nourish their body, but you deprive them, you say you're not going to eat. Or you begin to use bombs to destroy life, to destroy people. That's not good. When you begin to poison people, when you begin to use your personality to take advantage of others who are vulnerable, you are not morally right. You must learn to show kindness, extend love, extend peace to each and every one of us. Goodness also means the moral excellence. Be in life that no one will question your character. When they look at you, when they observe you, when you talk, when you relate to people, you communicate. People will desire. Whatever is desire is good. You cannot go and desire lying, killing, hatred, murder, envying someone who's not your wife, envying someone who's not your husband. That's more than wrong. Your ability to distinguish good to bad is what we call morale. But God is so good that he said, those who dwell in my house will see my ability to do them good. God does not wrong anybody. God does not steal from anybody. God does not murder anyone. God does not hate anyone. God is a good God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Yesterday, I explained to people that the goodness of God is the very nature of God's protection in our lives. Because God loves us, he protects us. Last night you went to bed. You didn't know that, you didn't know whether you were alive or dead until this morning. But this time between you slept and the time you woke up, you don't know what happened in between here. But God took care of you. He made sure that Nobody come and mess you up. He ensured that it's safe in your home. We shouldn't take it for granted. If you've made it today, you are alive and well. Thank God. If you've ever lost anything, thank God that 
coming to lose everything. Therefore, when you have the quality of being morally good or virtuous, remember the goodness of God is in you. And Collins Dictionary defines goodness as the state of, of quality of being good, moral excellence, virtue, kindly feeling, kindness, generosity, and excellence of quality. Now, I just want to talk about the excellence of quality. God wants each and every one of us in life to excel. In life, you cannot remain in the same position the way your mother gave birth to you, and you never grow to become another. God wants every one of us to excel, to develop, to do well. Every dream, every vision, every goal you have, God wants it to see it come to pass. And you yourself, if you don't see your life coming to pass through your dream, through your goal, through your vision, through the aspiration you have, you will find life very frustrating. You will even doubt why you should believe it. Some people make decisions to kill themselves. But thank God we don't do that. Because life is good. God is on our side. Why can't we take advantage every single day to show kindness to everyone? <coughs> to be of good quality in our endeavor. Every effort we make it to be the person God made us to be, we have to do it with excellence, with quality, with what we call superiority. You cannot be a Christian, you dress yourself anyhow. You cannot be a Christian, your body is made. You cannot be a Christian, you have a problem to walk. You have a problem in your personal appearance. Our God is a king. I never seen a broke king. I never seen a dirty king. I never seen a king who dressed anyhow. Once you see the king, you envy the king. And you are the sons and the daughters of the king. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So it's important, my brothers and sisters, for us to understand that for you to be good, you have to be connected with the one who is good. God is good. God is faithful. God is kind. God has mercy. And remember, wherever you have goodness, you find the word mercy. What it means, it means that when you are good, you have to learn also to forgive. Where there's no forgiveness, goodness is not there. You don't have to struggle to forgive people who have hurt you. You don't have to struggle to Forgive the people who have done things wrong. And many husband and wife have to learn to forgive one another. But I'm not preaching to you that you have to continue to do wrong so you can ask for forgiveness. No. Because you lose your own dignity if every time you make a mistake and use forgiveness as the tool to destroy whatever or to be able to take advantage. We shouldn't be like that. It's like you cannot sin so you can go to the Father to ask for forgiveness. No. Because sin makes us coward. Sin makes us unable to access what God has prepared for us. We must be men and women who are righteousness conscious than sin conscious. We have to be men who are full of goodness and also who have mercy to one another. Only those things will happen for those who are in the heart of God. Remember this morning we read Romans? When we read Romans, one thing we can see that everything works together for them that love God. Everything works together for good. 
for them that love God. Because God is good, therefore them that know that love God must also be good. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, Everything works together for good for them that love God. You love God, therefore you are good. Oh, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you are good. You are good. Oh, you are good. Love the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to end by saying this. When we have the goodness of God, we aspire to be good in life. It draws us close to God. You remember the song? When we lift up our hand, God will lift us up. When we praise him, when we come close to him, he will draw us closer. You need God. God does not need us to be God. Because before we were created, he was God. We just read Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible says, before you were in the womb of your mother, God knew you. Before you became John, Peter, Mark, Luke, God knew you. So therefore, live a godly life. Live at peace with everybody. Because the Bible says, if you don't live at peace with anyone, you'll never see God. If you don't see God, where will you go? Your destiny is decided by you. You either live a rough life or live a good life. But I suggest to you, live a good life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The purpose of God's goodness to draw us to Him, this is manifested in the highest degree when God sacrifices Son. God draw us close to Him. By sacrificing Jesus Christ. He said, I love mankind because I created them in my image and I want them to be my ambassadors on earth. So therefore, my relationship with man has been messed up because of sin. I'm going to draw close to them by sacrificing my son. So through my son, Relationships can be revealed. Amen. Through my son, reconciliation can take place. Sacrifice is important in life. Everyone you see succeeding in life, everyone you see making things happen in their life, they have sacrificed. I've told you, I was uh, reading about all these Hollywood, uh, Hollywood actors, they say, one of them said, while people are sleeping, I'm writing. While people are eating, I'm repeating my script. While people are enjoying themselves, I am working for my future. You've got to learn to sacrifice. Be somebody tomorrow. You're going to learn to do things that other people don't do so you can live a better life tomorrow. The goodness of God is something each and every one of us have to aspire. But for us to be good and have that goodness, let us dwell in the house of the Lord. Let us inquire of the Lord. And let all seek the Lord with all our heart and everything else. Will be added unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us stand. That's it for me today, brothers and sisters. Those of you watching from home, may the Lord Jesus Christ meet you at your point of need. Our home ways, draw close to God. For we have no other God. God bless you and we'll see you next time.